Hello guys, this video will be an excerpt from another video. I've recently shot a day-by-day -day CRM review, a Laravel CRM open source, and I decided to cut the one topic into a video. Probably the most important and most often question I get asked is about services and repositories in Laravel. So things like this one. So how to use something like client number service to generate client number. And this project day-by-day -day CRM is a good example. It used both services and repositories and in a different way. And in the next five minutes, you will see the example and let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think? Is it a good way how to use services and repositories? Or do you disagree with the day-by-day -day CRM author? Or maybe you disagree with my interpretation of how it is used. Anyway, let's talk in the comments and see you guys in other videos. The next topic is services, so how to use service classes. And we're not running away from the store method in client's controller with the same message. So controller should take care of the main operations and whatever is kind of a separate logic should be separated somewhere else. So we took a look at events and now whenever the store is happening on the client, so client create and take a look at this client number. So there is some kind of a logic of client number, which is kind of auto increment, but not exactly. And there is a class that is responsible for exactly that. So there is client number service. If we click that, there's app services, client number, client number service. And what it is doing is setting next client number, probably somewhere in the settings. I'm not sure whether it's in database or in some kind of config. Oh, it is in the settings database table, probably. This is a model, I assume. Yes, it is a model, so it is saved in the database and incremented. And there are quite a few services. If we take a look at services, app services folder, so there is activity services, comment, invoice, invoice number, storage and search. So this is the way how to separate your logic from the controller or from the model. And in my opinion, you should use services whenever you have some separate logic, but that logic could be combined with itself in a few methods or a few properties to create a separate class for that. Another interesting topic are repositories, so repository classes. And this is one of the most often questions I get everywhere, how to use repository classes and whether it's good or bad to use them. And this project does use them and let's see how exactly. So in the tasks controller, one of the tasks is to invoice. I assume it's creating the invoice. And to create the invoice, there's quite a few things involved. So the logic for the invoice. So there was a separate class created for that. This invoices invoice. So what it is, this invoices. This invoices is a protected property of a controller, which is set in the constructor. And it is an invoice repository contract. In the contract, there are methods described. What methods should there be? Get all invoices, get all open invoices and stuff like that. And then there is actual repository, invoice repository, which implements those methods. So repositories are typically used when there is some bigger logic around an eloquent model or around database table. So in this case, it's invoices. So this is the invoice model. But there are more operations involved around invoices. So finding something, invoicing, creating the invoice lines, creating the API integrations, book the invoice, set the status and all of that. And that should be somewhere. And for that, there could be a service. So it's a tricky question, what is the difference between service and repository? Usually a repository is tied to one model or one database table, and service is more abstract to whatever topic it is. It may be not necessarily the database table at all. So in this case, invoice repository is tied to invoices, and all the services are kind of outside database table in general. But there is another example I found in the repositories. So there is currency, for example. There is a currency repository, which has all the currencies inside of the repository itself. So there is a static variable, currencies, Danish Krone, US dollar, and all of those currencies, they are not in the database. They are in the repository itself, and all the methods of the repository are around that data. So default currency, get the code, get the value, get the symbol, get precision, and all of that. All those operations look like they would come from the database table, but instead of database table, the actual data is inside of the repository itself. I haven't seen that behavior in any projects in my past, but it's a pretty logical thing to do. So that's another example of a repository.